fuck is up, everybody? Welcome back to DFW Metal Mayhem, the most brutal podcast in the Metroplex. I am a man of friendly gesture, and I am a man of returning the favor. Guys, how the fuck y'all doing? Craig, You're doing great. Carrick of the Warlord Radio Podcast. Indeed. Thank you very much for having us out, Billy. These guys have been around just a fraction of the time that I've been doing this, and their quality is like 12,000 times better. We got really lucky. Our producer is the guitar player of my band, and I make him do shit for me. <laughs> but he happens to be a very accomplished sound guy, so yeah, we, we got really lucky. The, he's the missing guy today, Jason Rochester. Mm -hmm. He's the hidden hand of the whole show. So. He's actually, yeah. dude, check this out. He worked because he runs that studio we work out of. Mm -hmm. He's. <laughs> He has to do a session with a mumble rapper today. Ah, he was no. like, I would much rather do this podcast, but this guy's paying me a lot of money. earning his money. Seriously. Hey, that's, you know what? You gotta, you gotta sometimes do things you don't like. Uh, yeah, but it's like, You know what? It pays off and shit. Let it pay off. Uh, I kind of like how to use the uh, shadow hand because I'm the talker. I'm the editor and I'm the uploader, but like Mickey does all the like intros mm -hmm. and kind of help me format the podcast. So Mickey is like the shadow hand, except my shadow hand is like four hours away from me. <laughs> so it's like a, it's always like really a shadow hand because right. it's probably like waving like in the background. You can like see at the very corner of a picture of me. And it's just like <laughs> it's the great power flaws, just yeah. like Jason is the man so. behind the curtain. Yeah. <laughs> so does he do the opening animation for your show? Uh, yes, he does. The opening animation, the mm -hmm. intros for the those uh, are great. Interviews. So props to him for yeah. doing that. Uh, he also does all my house party flyers as well. Oh, yes. nice. Yeah, yeah. No, those are great. So you've got your own in-house slave. I like that. Yeah, yeah. man. But I, I definitely give him his dues. Um, he's that he. I think he definitely. He wants to try to come back down, uh, over here eventually because he would. He, he would like to do more. So he's four hours away. Where where's he at? I, what direction? Um, like he's like I forget where at in Texas, man. But like if you just went like east, like here's Waco. You just go east. Just east. Right. Some Where there's nothing but open country. Nothing but yeah. open country. He's somewhere in that it pasture. You could, <laughs> you could bury like several European countries in East Texas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so easy. So easy. Yeah. Uh, for like, I, I have friends that live out of state and things like that. And I tell, I, had, I remember specifically, I had a friend. Uh, she's involved in one of those like Ponzi scheme, uh, like makeup company kind yeah. of things. Mm -hmm. And uh, she called me and she was like, hey, just so you know, we have a big convention going on in Austin tomorrow. Maybe your wife would want to go. And I was like, Austin is four hours away from where we are. <laughs> and, so, and she was just like, really? And I was like, yes, Texas is huge. Yeah. I was like, it just doesn't work like that. I think I, I read somewhere that if you were to drive around the outer edge of Texas, it would take you like three and a half or four days. No, I don't. What the yeah, fuck? Yeah, it's insane. It's an insane like landmass. Just, well, just in case you want to do something for no fucking reason and just waste a shit ton of money. Right? Please there send me go. pictures of that shit. I want yeah. to see, like meet the guy that drives around the edge of Texas. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we've. We've played in a, uh, a, a metal fest up in Battle Creek, Michigan, which is outside of Detroit. And then we've played down by the McAllen area of the border of mm -hmm. Texas. And the drive was identical. That's insane, if you think. That's like... Are you fucking kidding, dude? I'm dead serious. <laughs> oh, shit! So that's how big Texas is. It's like you can either go down to, like, Corpus or the southern border... Like, oh, you can go most of the rest of the way to the United States. <laughs> yeah, you can <laughs> almost be in Canada. Yeah. yeah, you know what's hilarious is uh, <coughs> one, one kind of example I like to use is, uh, you know, Brianna and I are like a thing. We've been a thing for a couple months now. Mm -hmm. And we both live in Texas. So it's like, oh, cute little Texas couple. It's long distance of shit. She's six, <laughs> she's six hours away. Right. That's, really. a, they, right, that's like an entirely different country in like Western Europe. <laughs> yeah, dude, for real. <laughs> So I had another guy who lives like up in the, the New York, New Jersey, like in New England, essentially. Right. And I was, he was like, so we were talking about Houston. He's like, how far away is Houston? I was like, I think Houston's like five and a half hours away or something like that. He, Jesus Christ, I can stand on my porch in four <laughs> different states. <laughs> Dude, there, uh, there's this thing on Facebook and it's kind of been like a, a trend of, for, for the shit posters. 
and it's a page called Civil War Bot 2020. Oh, I've seen that. It's so fucking stupid. So literally what it is, it's just a map. And each state is a different color. And every hour, a state conquers another state. Okay. And it tells you. <laughs> and so literally the bot will go on until there is one remaining state. And it is fucking hilarious. That's amazing. What's even better is that that came after World War Bot 2020, which is every country <laughs> is doing the same shit. That sounds fucking awesome. <laughs> like, uh, have you seen the, the the nuclear bomb simulator? What? I can't remember the link, but there's a it's a it has this entire list of all of the different bombs that have been made in the world, or like like throughout history, like every fucking one of them, and it essentially gives you a map. And you pick a place on the map, and you detonate a bomb, in them, and then you see like how much damage it would do. Mm -hmm. And when you get up to like atom bombs and hydrogen bombs, it not only shows you like the fucking drop zone damage, it shows you all the irradiated outside, all the fallout, and which way it would move and stuff like that. It's really wild. But once you start doing it for about an hour, you think start to think you're kind of just disturbed. Yeah. <laughs> you're just like, well, this is how we're going to die eventually. Yeah, because I basically, I made this game. I was like, what's the population of this country? How much of the population of this country can I take out? Because it gives you like a casualties list. Right. God damn. And I found that the least populated country, uh, city in the entire world is like this tiny little city called like Deercock. It's in the Yukon somewhere. Mm -hmm. they, yeah, and they have a population of like 87 people. That's a pretty happy in a little place in the Yukon. Yeah, yeah, right. Right. That's what I'm saying. It's, like, that's, it's impressive. You know those people are just hard as fuck, right? Yeah. yeah. Like, they just they don't mess around at all. But yeah, I, I found out, like, you don't even really need a big bomb to take out the entire town. No. That's what did no, that, not at that all. Was, that was the minute I was like, I think I'm going to put this down <laughs> for a minute. Yeah, dude. Damn. So, are we the first podcast that we've had uh, on your podcast? The, what do you consider what Lauren does? Okay. But did you air that? Yes, I did air the episode of Just Him. Oh. I did an episode of Just Metal Nation back in gotcha. the early years. Right, right. Um, I don't know if you can consider... Obviously, what he does is not a podcast. Um, man, I'm not familiar. Like, what does this guy do? Um, he, Metal Nation. Metal Nation. It is a thing where Lauren um, interviews bands at the location of where they're playing. Oh, cool! Uh, and he like records a song during it, and then he puts it together in like this little interview format on Facebook. Um, think I guess he's like the long, less drama filled version of Team Z. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did some work for him. Before I started DFW Metal Mayhem, right, and um, I didn't really like the direction where he was going. I think I can openly talk about it because it's not really a big deal. Um, I don't but, even think that. I mean, I, I could be wrong, but I, I, is Metal Nation even still a thing? Um, I mean, he does more house party throwing now. I mean, oh. not house party throwing, but no more show booking now. Every now and then, he'll book a show at. Um, O'Reilly's, if you remember when he was doing that for a minute or two. Mm -hmm. uh, though I haven't seen him do that since. Um, I haven't really seen any new Metal Nation videos either. Yeah. But, I mean, it's, it's neither here nor there. I was just idly curious. Yeah. No, it's funny you mention that because now I think about it, I'm like, oh shit, yeah, he hasn't really. So you could oh. probably just like blast him right now, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, not, it, it's actually nothing really too serious. It was a conflict of interest. And eventually we wanted to do my own thing because that's just how I am by nature. Right. I feel um, like when you enter into a pact of something that you're doing like either creatively or something like this, it's fair to do that. Be like, hey man, like my tastes have changed, I'm kind of moving on to something else. Essentially he wanted me to come to Deep Elm every week to do this thing called Concert Calendar. If you remember the one time I did Concert Calendar. Mm -hmm. um, and the and thing is, he said that's every week I have to drop $5. Okay. okay. That's not a big deal, right? But like, if it I'm adds to, up. it adds <laughs> up. And dude, if I'm gonna be in deep elm, I'm gonna have a beer at Reno's at the time because it was like, like hey, Shiner, here's only three dollars. You fucking fuck me up, fuck me the fuck up. Yeah. You know. So, um, you know, that's like what an additional fifteen to ten dollars when I go. 
And um, every week, dude, dropping dropping shit like that, but I did not want to do it. I was a new homeowner at the time. Oh, yeah. So mm-hmm. I'm like, Lord, I don't think this is going to work, my bro. Because he, he also lived out in, like, way the fucking Plano. Yeah. And, you know, even if I hop on a 161 George Bush Turnpike and just fucking blast it down there, it's a 40-minute drive. It takes an hour to get from anywhere in the Metroplex to anywhere else yeah. in the Metroplex minimum. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, there's nowhere is just, like, a quick jog around the corner. Yeah, that's why I like Grand Prairie so much is because Arlington definitely feels like that. Yeah. Irving kind of feels like that. And Dallas sort of feels like that. And Fort Worth kind of does too, even though Fort Worth always seems the longest to me. Mm-hmm. Like, I, like driving to Tonka always feels slightly longer than driving to, like, O'Reilly's. I don't know why. Even though they're technically almost the same, like, distance, it just feels like a longer drive in Fort Worth. Every I think time. it's just there's, cause there's really long stretches of nothing, on, <laughs> like, on your way out that way. Yeah. Like, you until you hit Saginaw, there's, like, fuck all out there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, it's, but, yeah, so, you know, I just didn't want to do that. And eventually, I'm like, dude, it'd be just cool to have just, like, a band come in. And we just interview them for 45 minutes. Let's talk about their influences, how they first started. Let's talk about what their interests are. Mm-hmm. Um, let's shoot the shit with them. Let's find out where they got planned this year. Um, if they got planned anything next year, you know. Dick size comparison on the table. <laughs> Is that what these etchings are? <laughs> no, that's just overzealous drug Dungeons and Dragon players who get mad when they got them that 20. <laughs> That's when you drop your dick on their shoulder just to see right. the movie. Yeah. Hey, yeah. motherfucker. <laughs> Shit, man. It almost happened last session. Oh, well. They they, 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 they survived. Right. <laughs> did, the, did the table get thrown over? No. And Are you the DM? Everywhere? I, I am a DM. I, I do both, though. Because sometimes you have people that will only DM. Yeah. I, I, actually, I actually know people who have never played it. A character yeah. in their life, but they DM like a motherfucker. Yeah, I know a couple of dudes like that. And I'm like, guys, you are missing like the best part. I, like creating a world and enemies is awesome. Creating bosses is fucking cool. But creating your own character. Yeah, putting yourself in a scenario where you get to slay dragons and kill orcs and shit. Yeah. Or you know, I could fucking seduce a bugbear if I fucking feel like it. <laughs> Do whatever I want. It's kind of nice. I mean, I mean. Fifth edition bards can basically do that easily. Fifth, oh, yeah. ed- fifth edition bards are s- fucking stupid now because it's literally like a first level spell is literally like, you know what? Point to that dude and just be like, fuck you. Dude, I remember back in first edition, if you were a bard or a paladin, mm-hmm. like somebody could just sneeze at you and you would be fucking done. Oh, <laughs> wizard. <laughs> fucking wizard. Yeah. Three health. Squishy as fuck, man. Like you had no. No defense whatsoever. But now they're dumb. Now they're like the dumbest class ever because at first level, they can really just do a spell where they can still fear in your mind and can do an, a max of 18 fucking damage at level fucking one. It's bullshit. I'm sorry. I would love to be that guy though where it's like, this is my first time on a quest and then just nuke the fuck out of everybody and be like, man, I'm pretty good at this. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Yeah, but like, no, I, I'm, I'm really happy about 5th edition. 5th edition for me to got a bunch of the unnecessary bullshit that 4th edition brought in. Yeah. And it made it a little simple for new people. The one thing that does fucking suck is that the monsters in 5th are exponentially weaker than they were in 3.5. Really? And I really felt like they could have kept the difficulty in 3.5. But well, Any it, of the earlier editions, like, the monsters were meant to fuck you up. They were supposed to be hard battles. Yeah. And then now, like, there's a lot of fodder mm-hmm. in the game. I mean, it probably makes it a little bit more fun, but... I remember back when I was really heavy into D and D, just these fucking ridiculously overpowered monsters that would just you know destroy the fucking party. <laughs> and it's like you you might get a lucky shot in, and if you did, you got a shitload of experience for it. That was how that guy set it up. It was wild. I mean, like you can make really hard dungeons and shit. I mm-hmm. mean, I mean, if you look at the Tomb of Annihilation Fifth Edition, that. I remember my friend was playing and he said, I need four different characters in that campaign because they all died. Oh, yeah. And his four characters died at the end. Oh, that sucks. That yeah. would make me sad. Yeah, he died at the final battle. Do you guys play Magic as well? Uh, I used to play Magic. I used to run a red and blue, and then I ran a red and black. Mm-hmm. And I did pretty good, but I was never like good enough to like, compete in my tournaments. Right. Uh, Tyler Berry was telling me last night at the, the show... 
that I mean I knew before that, but he loves to play magic. Like he's like a, he's like an assassin. He walks up and he's like, "Oh, you like magic?" It's like I'll fucking beat you. <laughs> yeah, dude. He's kind of like he's I played like, Yu-Gi-Oh. I'm not a fucking nerd. I have played I have played Yu-Gi-Oh as well. I used it was to, fun. I used to run a. Uh, yeah. I think we talked about it. I ran a a, a legendary ocean deck. Oh, nice. And just nuke the field with Neil Deadless over over. <laughs> nuke, 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 and everyone's just like, "Fuck you." What was the name of that set of cards? That was the giant Egyptian god. You had to assemble it though. It was like you, one of the cards was a head, one of the cards. Oh, Exodia. Was, yeah, Exodia. I knew a guy that had Exodia, and it was like that set was so fucking overpowered. You couldn't. I don't think you could play it in tournament play. So speaking of magic, um, my friend Eric made these. He has like a bunch of like spare D and D. I mean not D and D magic cards. So he cut some of them out, and we use them as character tokens oh, cool. for our campaign. That's awesome, man. That's yeah. a great fucking idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very cool. Very helpful to know where you are in a battle. Like, as far in terms of, like, because geography matters sometimes, right. you know what I mean? Yeah. It's uh, it's a lot better than my idea, which I kind of took from him, too. If I can find it in here, it's fucking hilarious. Yeah, here it is. I fucking did cardboard pieces. So, like, that's supposed to be a stand? <laughs> I'm gonna do that for my kid, man. Fuck buying an action figure. It's like, Daddy's got a printer and some right. boxes. Yeah, dude, it works. It's cheap, it's there you affordable. Go. And you can find really cool images like that? Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Tight. I like it. That's a good idea. We're gonna keep him here. He'll be part of the podcast. Hell really. yeah, dope. Sidekick. So, um, this is post Mike Vest Fest. Yes, from yesterday last night. Podcast. Right. Man. What a fucking show, huh? Yeah, it was amazing. It was uh, great to see everybody there, you know, pulling together for Mike. Yeah. You know, showing love and respect for the guy, because mm -hmm. he's definitely missed, which is obvious, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but it was great just to see all the bands, all the people. I mean, Wits End was nuts to butts all the way, Act all night long. Yeah, so. dude, we, I, I, I mean, we played, when we played at Suicide Awareness, <coughs> We had a pretty big crowd at like what? We we played like what eleven thirty, eleven fifteen. We played like right after you guys that mm -hmm. night. Yeah, I and think it was like eleven fifteen or something. Yeah, and I mean it was big. But dude, seven forty five I think it was about the same size. Mm -hmm. It was crazy. Yeah. Um and just all the people that came in throughout the night. Yeah. Like like you got that first crop dust pit at Metal Fest was nasty. This one got fucking dirty. Yeah. <laughs> There's actually uh we uh, some of the pit, uh, uh, we, there's some footage of the pit bulls that um, that's being edited by Steve right now. And there's mm -hmm. one where Tank just takes this chick out because this chick's just going wild. She runs right to me, just goes, and dude, she literally just disappears. <laughs> disappears bro. Like disappears. It's like you're gone. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she does not exist anymore. No, uh. <laughs> Tank is a big boy. Dude. Oh yeah, he is. You know, he, that name is fitting. But dude, you know like who's more scary than him is his fucking wife. Yeah. His wife. I feel like wife. if you're gonna marry a dude named Tank, you better be a pretty bad bitch. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <for real. laughs> he's yeah. the sweetest guy, by the way. Yeah, but he's like yeah, he's like super nice and yeah. everything. It's it's like it's like the see pitbulls. Eat, People are have a bunch of members are fucking scary looking. Oh yeah. Okay, like I love Dizzy. Okay, but if I didn't know Disney and I'm walking home with my groceries to my house, got some bread and some butter and some milk and some what, what the fuck ever, and I see him walking this way, my ass is crossing the street and I'm going this way, dude. Uh, no, any guy with horns tattooed on his head is cool with me. So. Yeah, if I saw that, I think I'd be <laughs> alright. Uh. I, I would be like, damn, that dude is a... Uh... Fuck, okay, keep a guard when you pass this dude. But Dizzy's so nice! Right. He's so fucking nice, and Mike is just, Mike is fucking huge. Yeah. Mike was a fucking wall. Like, and like, some of those photos that he takes with the Pitbull's hat, like, with that, with that mouth of bear hat where he can't see his eyes, he's just like, this, like, what the fuck? <laughs> dude, that, a monster, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he's super chill, dude, super chill. Like, always, like, a little laid out when, when, when he was working the door. Get all your aggression out in the pit. There's no reason to bring any kind of negativity into the real world. It's kind of fucking liberating. You oh, know dude. I mean? oh, dude, when that dude moshed, he was like a fucking, you know, like those Mario enemies that would just like go, like trying to crush your shit. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. Mike was a fucking walking dwarf. 
You Fuck yeah, just man. fucking rail people. <laughs> you sent my ass flying almost to a guardrail one time. That shit was hilarious. <laughs> that shit happens, man. I got sent over a chain link fence one time. Oh, fuck. I, like, I jumped and some guy was coming up and he caught me right under his shoulder and just fucking launched me, man. I was up over it. It was crazy. <laughs> shit. <laughs> but I, like, I, I remember that one night that I got kicked out of Reno's. And before that, that time that I almost got into a fight at uh, the Lich King show, both instances when I was getting really out of control, because that was the Wits End story. I was trying to get this dude out of the pit because he got because because he was standing at the edge of it and he kept getting hit and you could tell he was gonna be really fucking mad about it. So mm-hmm. I, I push him back and I'm like, You good dude? And I, I like and like I he does the same thing, so I turn away and he fucking shoves me. Mm-hmm. I'm like, Oh no, 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 no. Like, come on, man. And I, I was to trying back. to help you man. I turned back like, dude, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, dude, what the fuck? I'm trying to help you. And he's like, fuck you, what are you gonna do? I'm like, what? And he just shoved me again, and so I just shoved him, and like I was just about to throw, like I was throwing, I was already throwing. And all these people just grab that kid, and just moved back, and I'm like, and like right before I knew it, I turned this way, and fucking Mike just took me <laughs> like that, put me up against the bar. It was like you're done, we're done. You gotta chill. Let's go outside now. Yeah, man. Dude, yeah, and he dragged me outside, man. Like it was nothing to him. Shit can get heated in the pit for sure, yeah. but I mean, like, a good pit's a good pit, a bad pit's a bad. The thing pit. is, we weren't even watching at that moment. I was just trying to get him out because he wasn't. You know. Right. Yeah. And then the other time, you know, when I was getting really belligerent, that dude threw me in that jello pool sign when I got me, and I started to piece him up, and Mike, like a bunch of them grabbed me, but like Mike was like, no, 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 y'all can't handle it, so I, the phone I heard, Mike just, <laughs> <laughs> pulled him out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, that next morning, after that, I, I was like, he was like the first person I apologized to, I'm like, you know, so, so, I'm so fucking sorry, god damn it. I hate asshole. nights like that, where I get kind of, uh, let's say, a little drunk or something, and get kind of nuts, and then the next morning, I just wake up, and like, I owe someone an apology. <laughs> <laughs> Surely. But, uh, you know, I have so many memories of that, dude. So, so and now, I'm just like, you know what, I, I decided I was going to get both shirts, so I got... The one that Dave Combat. Yeah, these are both sick. This one's badass, man. And I got the one that this was uh, Tom Thompson from Combat. Oh yeah, Did right on. Very cool. Yeah. We actually just had those guys on our podcast. They're great dudes. Yeah, they're gonna be on our next episode. Oh my god! Yeah, so shout out to Combat. Oh uh, dude, Combat. y'all y'all be sure to watch that. I had them on po- I, I had them on my podcast too. We got yeah. really drunk off Crazy Cowboys. That yeah. sounds awesome, actually. <laughs> yeah, dude. Them, yeah, dude. Them boys love Crazy Cowboys. If they didn't talk about Crazy Cowboys once on that episode, no. I'm gonna be whoa. We did, we did drink Tall Boys all night, I think. Yeah, or something. I don't know. <laughs> but no, dude, I love like, I, dude, to like, I, I really like when it comes to my like taste and like what I really like listening to. I love listening to stuff that I feel like I can punch a hole through. Mm-hmm. Typical white guy drywall bullshit, whatever. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, but for me, dude, I think combat writes like my favorite breakdowns in the scene. Like the obstructionist breakdown. Oh, come, come they're on. They're straight Fuck up. A, they're a force of nature, man. We played with them at the Krampus Fest at Andy's and Denton. Mm-hmm. And they were, and it, we had a great lineup that night. They were easily the loudest band on the bill. Like I could hear them when I got out of my car across the square. And did, I wasn't anywhere near that building. And then, I mean, it's like just the energy that those guys bring is nuts. Like they're a true show. Like they're a force of nature. Yeah. When you see them, they're like, I don't know. I'm very impressed by combat. It was the very, it was the, I I mean, I think they put on the best set last night. I like, like they definitely brought all the energy, all the pain that came with it too. Like they're like, like every song they had just a hard pit. It was like, and I mean, this is coming from someone who's had him in his house party, and every song that they played in that one door garage had the entire floor that was able to move, move. Damn. It was ridiculous, dude. <laughs> like, that, the, the, and the great thing about them, and if I feel like every band should try it, try it out a little bit, they fit on the bill in so many different shows mm-hmm. really well. They can play a hardcore show, they can play a metal show, they can play a punk show, a grind show, they can, if, like, they, I, I mean, if you really want to put, like, they can do, like, some crazy extreme metal show, I mean, 
that's a band that can literally encompass the bill in any way you want them to. Mm -hmm. Like you, you, we have we have a couple bands like that. Like Exhortation is a really good band that does that. Um, Collapse in the Chaos is another one. Like there are just those bands that are just able to bridge the gaps. Another one that doesn't get mentioned a lot. I feel like they should get mentioned is Run the Asylum. Yeah, they're, they're also a band that can also do that as well. Just yeah, in a multi-platform, and it's kind of nice. Yeah. You know. you know, you don't always have to play a tap death show. You don't always have to play a hardcore show. You can. I like it when it's mixed up because we were talking about that the other night. We're like a set that's got you know seven tech death bands on it, right? And a lot of those guys will sound the same sometimes. And it's like, man, I got like maybe four of you guys into me, and then I'm gonna spend most of the night outside smoking a cigarette until I hear something that's awesome. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I I think shows that are stacked were. All the bands are of a specific subgenre. Uh, is I I just think it ends up taken away from the the uniqueness of the bands because no matter what it is, whether it's like a straight thrash show or a straight death show or whatever, is by the fourth or fifth band, each blast beat is sounding a lot. Each guttural is sounding the same. Okay. It's like you you. It's really hard to distinguish yourself mm -hmm. at all when you're playing with just this stacked lineup where everybody is brutal death metal or whatever. I will say that that does make a lot of sense. And I do agree with you, but man, when I was at the Building Temples from Death Show, mm -hmm. which was, you know... That's the, in Houston. Yeah, that that was just straight death metal from like beginning to end. Yeah. That was like, what, from like three to like one? Yeah, and there are festivals out there that do that, and that's one of them. And and I'm not knocking those at all. I'm just saying, me, yeah. as a, <laughs> me as a fan, me as a listener, I like all of those subgenres. Yeah. I do not want to see four bands in a row of anything the same. Yeah. I feel yeah. I I guess I guess I was just like in a really death metal mood that day. I was uh, yeah, like, it, yeah. I mean, it's it. Like all I those said, bands they're great. Destroyed. And, and, yeah, and they're great, man. It is. I just. Me personally, like as a fan, is I just find that problematic. I mean, it, like, like as a, for instance, uh, you know, something like Summer Slaughter is. Oh God. You know. Yeah. It, it seems great on paper, but at least for me personally, is is like, man, like you see like one amazing drummer after another, but then at the end of it, it's really just kind of a blur. Whereas if you're playing with a more varied lineup, I mean, and it doesn't have to be like, like, let's be real, like very, I'm talking about keeping it metal, yeah. like, but I'm just saying like, yeah. whenever you get like super subgenre specific, yeah. I'm just kind of out on that because to me, it just makes it more boring. The exception to that rule though, of course, is hiring a DJ to be on the metal show, right? Right. Yeah. 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 That's the dumbest shit. And they do it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> um... I'll tell you what, the first couple times we played at Diamond Gems, you definitely remember this well. Yeah. The guy who would never stop talking at the sound booth. <laughs> In between our fucking songs! Right. What? Yes! Like how? Woo! That was good shit! Yeah, brother! Woo! It's like, I'm glad you're enthusiastic, but we usually should say shit in these spaces. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, and you should have harassed him back. Your band sucks. Oh, <laughs> no. I don't, I, I don't remember which one it was, but I remember Nick, like, when he was in the band, he was playing with us at the time, and the Supers never shut up talking, and Nick was like, shut the fuck up! And, like, Nick and I weren't getting along at all. Like, I, like the first month we were, and, like, after that, too, things got, like, a little bumpy. Mm -hmm. But, man... He was definitely my friend that night. I'm like, thank you so fucking much. <laughs> Holy shit. But um, I do know what you mean about that. Uh, there's actually a really good show coming up uh, April 27th at um, The Shop. I don't mean to like Spy, but that flyer is fucking cool, man. Yeah, the, dude. So the Shop, I'm not aware of where that Barrage, is. Barrage, Enlist, Life Force, fucking Fatebringers coming back. Nice. And they're on this fucking bill. Nice. Uh, Earn. Yeah, Which is, right. um, I, my, my friend uh, Jan, uh, Alex Yanez was in that band. I don't know if he's in it anymore, but I went to high school with that dude. Um, Omission, which is a pretty good, um, like, kind of metalcore, hardcore band. Um, fucking Combat. I mean, whew, that's sloppy. Mm -hmm. That's a sloppy Joe lineup. Um, next weekend, I, I'm working the 420 Fest at the Fabrication Yard. And dude... We got you got you got everyone from like the Ellen DeGenerates to American Minority, K 
Kill Boy, Shooting Stars, Bozo, Imperial Slaughter, Blot Out, Arcade, Combat, and Liz. Damn. The Alan Degenerates. Oh, yeah, I think they talked about that on their show. I think I'm going to that show. So yeah, yeah, dude, fucking, that's, yeah, that's, that's from 2. Yeah, that's a lineup, man. Yeah, that's from 2 p.m. Yeah. to 2 a.m. And the Fabrication Yard, where's that? That is about three miles away from Whitson's. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I know. Where's the shop? I haven't heard of that place. The shop is on. Uh, the shop is on. Um, Main Street, North Main Street. Okay. Yeah. Is it new? Uh, it's Hutchins. Uh, I'm not sure, but it's in. Uh, it's in Hutchins, Texas. Hutchins, Texas. Hmm. Um. See, there's some good shows, man. Yeah. There's a lot of good shows around here. We're we're lucky in that there's a pretty vibrant local scene right now. Yeah, yeah. it's really milling out like really well. I got a lot of really good feedback from the show last night and um, someone's like, you could actually be a really good grindcore vocalist. I'm like, what? Yeah, that would be awesome. I'd listen I, would, I, would, I, I would, I would, I would want to, like, yeah, I, my reaction is the same as Craig. I'm like, yeah, I mean. I can see it, but I mean, uh, I have you haven't it. done any grind vocals exactly. yet. Exactly. So not to say you couldn't, I just couldn't accurately say, oh yeah, you'd be great with grind vocals. Just literally haven't done it yet. Yeah, you know? I'm gonna have to work But I mean, yeah, put your mind anything, you can do it. I mean, For it, sure. you know, it's one of those things, just pick a direction and go, you know. It's all, it's all, it's really the only thing that we can do as musicians. Then, yeah, for sure. I mean, well, he's a musician, I'm, not. I'm just a singer. Well, Same. I am faking it until I make it. <laughs> You can call me. I have a lot of people duped into thinking I'm a musician. Right. That's what I did. I'm just faking it and not gonna make it. <laughs> I'm just like, uh, look, man. I just, I just do really cool looking shit while I sing, and the other guys do all the hard work. You show me. <laughs> I definitely try to be. Yeah, man. I was bummed that you guys didn't get to play that J and J show. I was so yeah. fucking mad. God damn it! Every time I saw a post of that that <laughs> night, I'm like, fuck. Me. We had uh, fun, fuck man. Me. That was fuck a lot of fun. Me. That was a lot of fun. Ah, uh, dude, I was, because we were doing the, because, you know, since I didn't have anything to do, I was, I was required to be at the uh, Kill Everything video shoot and all that. Mm -hmm. I really didn't want to do it, but, you know, I did it anyway because it's my duty. Right. Um, but, man, we sat, I, I, I sat there for like six hours waiting for it to start. Mm -hmm. And, like, I'm like, oh, I, I hate that shit. I could be playing yeah. right now. And Reed. Reed was like, I really should have just done the, our show because he had a really bad running with one of the bands when he played really? that night. Yeah. Yeah, but when he, when he played with um, Rivethead, uh -huh. I forgot. I, I mean, I know which band he said gave him a bunch of shit. Uh, so what did they give him shit about? Um, just everything. Like, complaining about everything. <laughs> just like, my dicks. Yeah, like, uh, uh, he, like apparently, they, they apparently yelled at the drummer because the way he stacked his stuff for some reason. Um, he yelled Tell them at, to fuck right off. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and he yelled at Reed for like they yelled at Reed for something, and they were just saying some shit like, "Oh, millennials don't appreciate real music" or some shit. Um, I know who the band is. I'll let y'all know who it is after this shit cuts. Fair off. enough, bro. What what fuck dickhead. Off. Yeah, fuck yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, but, you know what? Maybe I'll have them on one day and just pretend that you know everything's cool. That'd and, be awesome. And then and then like, so listen, this is how I stack my drums. I'm just gonna yeah. bring them yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Asshole. Yeah. But yeah, don't douche. do that. Don't like, be douche. Yeah, the thing is that why is any local band trying to act bigger than that? Yeah, Stop. you know, if you're not yeah. signing someone's paycheck or fucking, yeah. you know, like, just shut the fuck up. Yeah, dude. sometimes <laughs> even if you are doing those, right? Things, yeah, shut the fuck up. yeah, indeed. And so especially if you're not, like, no room. Exactly. Yeah. Zero. <laughs> fucking zilch. No, man, I hate people that just. I mean, if you have a legitimate gripe about something, like if I wrapped like a club cable wrong and it could put a crimp in it or something like that, like I get that. But if you're just being an asshole and just kind of micromanaging everything, it's like, man, go find some other corner to fuck off in. Yeah, yeah. dude, Reed was like, I was about to turn my shirt inside out, which is a reference to, <coughs> you know, if, if Pitbulls ever have to, like, you know, scrap, yeah. we used to turn our shirts inside out. It's a rule. Right. Uh, and Reed was like, well, I was about to turn, turn my shirt inside out. So when you get the guy who is known for hugging a pillow in a pit, <laughs> when you get that guy mad and he wants to punch you, you're a fucking dick. Yes. You're a fucking dick. You take that shit to the bank. <laughs> God. It's like there's a sliding scale, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to get your guys' take on this. What do you all think about uh, this tour with Ronnie James Dio's Hologram? 
fucking mad. I'm horrible mad about it, but... Um, Why, though? Because I feel like this is a way just to cash grab. And I know that's the number one but argument people are going to use. I think use. it's a cash grab for his family, though. Man, are they really fucking struggling that hard where they need to bring their dead relative in a picture image <laughs> on a stage for weeks and weeks? What's funny, though, is I think he'd approve. He'd be like, you essentially made me a laser ghost. I'm into this. Maybe. I Maybe. don't know. Like, uh, it's hard to say... Uh, and the reason I ask is just because it's like in the news and I know it's coming yeah, it's all over it's going to be a huge show I have not I will say this I have not decided whether or not I'd go yet because I'm not totally against the idea also I never got to see Dio in concert yeah. and you know I am a Dio freak I would get that man's face tattooed on my chest tomorrow you I, know what I mean my initial reaction to that is very hesitant that this could bring something horrendously lame no, maybe not. Maybe I'm 100% wrong. That's a, that's a solid... But, but my, uh, my worry is, is the thing I don't like it right off the bat is that a hologram is completely programmed. So essentially you're seeing a puppet version yes. of that performer. So every show when you see a live band is the part of the thrill, at least for me, for seeing it, is that the performers are going to bring something unique to that show. And so, even if they're playing the same set, you know, even if they're on a tour, and this is day 30 of 100, is, you know, Ronnie is going to say something a little bit different from this city to this city, or they might extend a section here and here. And this is pre-programmed, and it's not him doing the program. It's, it's running the same exact course. It's taking yeah. the live out of live performance. Yeah, and that's whatever. what I don't like. Like, I've heard arguments of, like, well, what's the difference between watching, like, that and, like, a biopic on movies. I don't quite buy that argument. That's a uh, false equivalency. It, yeah, it, it, yeah. I, I agree with that. Is The thing that I'm worried about is is that, you know, if this is a big success, is we're going to see fucking hologram everything. Oh. Elvis, the Beatles, yeah, Led yeah. Zeppelin, and then it's going to get to a point where there's no need for people to go out and discover new music because you They're can always manufacture yeah, you can, they can manufacture yeah. just the idealized version of what they think the idealized version is of yeah. Black Sabbath or whoever and it's like no like part of the elite <coughs> again for me is the immediacy and the, the joy of seeing a band is this is a limited thing like yeah. even a band that lasts a long time like Black Sabbath is I knew when I saw them I was like, this is it. Like, I oh, got to yeah. count on, like, and you can't ever take stuff for granted. I mean, it's yeah. like, you know, you see Slayer for the last time. Like, I don't really think 20, 30 years from now that they should have the young version hologram of Slayer <coughs> playing for people. I think that yeah. you should, by all means, support the band, buy their albums, listen to the shit out of it, watch the home videos. Yeah, but... You know, should they be broadcasting? And then not only that, but it's not that the band is making those calls, it's whoever owns the program yeah, exactly. is making that call. Yeah. It's a real kind of, I think, it's gross like territory. It's like a Philip K. Dick-esque, you know. Well, like, you know, like in, in movies and in ads now, we're starting to see like old time movie stars that are dead Yeah. now, now selling cigarettes or cars or whatever. And it's like, all right, so somebody else owns the rights to their likeness and can use them however the fuck they want. I'm not easy with that. Yeah, that's, like, that's I don't, a good point. I think that takes away agency from the artist, and I think that that is the most important part of the whole fucking thing. And who's to say that at some point they couldn't just literally manufacture the, the yeah. newer pop stars from scratch? Yeah. Like, the, the name, the, that would literally be the record industry telling you what to listen to. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. You know, yeah, that's Which is antithetical to everything that we here are doing. Yes. Yes. Is like we're trying to let people have a voice and discover new bands, new I, artists, and things like that. I feel like, like that. if you over glorify what was in the past to the point where you're acting like as if this is what mattered, this is what it was it, and you don't get this anymore, 
you're going to, as you said, you're going to desynthesize people from wanting to go discover new artists that are coming out, that are breaking out. That's why I have such a really strong bias against cover bands, which I know sounds fucking crazy initially, yeah. but the thing is, is that why would you want to go risk paying $10 to see a local show where you only know one of the local bands you don't know the other four, yeah. and what if you don't like those other four, you essentially wasted your money in your head. I so why aren't you going to go instead, play it safe, and go see a fucking Slayer cover band? You like Slayer enough, and they're going to play the songs that you know that you like already. Yeah. I know it's like a pretty <laughs> far-reaching like comparison. No, no, I it's... deal with the cover band thing because I've got mixed feelings on cover bands. Because like straight up, a good cover band can be a really fun show. Yeah. But I believe that they deserve to be paid off their door and stuff because they they're performing. They're there. They're with their gear. Like they were. They took the time to work up the songs and shit like that. They put on a performance. They should get money for that. But when cover bands start putting out like merch and shit. It's based off of, you know, the, the original designs of the band that they're covering. It's like yeah. you're completely exploiting somebody else's IP there, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's how I, I don't know, because like I said, a cover band can be fun, but at the same time, in my mind, I'm like, I mean, it's great that you're entertaining people and you're obviously providing that service, but once you start like actually generating a significant amount of revenue off something like that, and that's the problem with cover bands, is they actually make a shitload of money doing that they stuff. They do. Yeah. And yeah, to, to me, it, like, in my mind, is there's a hierarchy in bands in, in the sense that I think it's great, you know, people wanting to get out and play music and learning and you get together and you learn some covers and you go out and play. Awesome. That's one step into becoming a musician. Yes. And then, you know, maybe you get a little more proficient at that and, you know, you're, you're playing some stuff and then maybe you try to work in like an original song, so like some go from there, kind of stuff. and then you go from there. Uh, so, I mean, it's good. I'd rather see that than like a pop artist or something like that. Right. that that's cool if that's what they want to do. But make no mistake at the top of that hierarchy is someone playing original shit yes if you're a tribute band or you're a cover band you are lesser well tribute bands are a little different though because aren't they basically writing original songs just kind of in that vein no uh, at uh, least to my knowledge is and i could be a hundred percent wrong on this uh but to my knowledge like if someone says tribute band is that is somebody focused solely on like kiss they are yeah. a Kiss tribute band, and they dress like Kiss, and they play only Kiss material, and that's it. Like to a to cover, band, cover band, but to me, a cover band is we'll do twenty covers of twenty different bands, ah, um, and and just play. But we're not necessarily going to try to look exactly like Judas Priest and do only Judas Priest covers. Okay, my, I've, I've heard another theory, and I think it's less accurate than what you described. I heard a tribute band is when you're playing songs from a band that is no longer performing, so that's hence why it's a tribute. You're 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 paying homage to a product that's almost and, and artistry. Maybe and, and, I mean like there's no there's no else. rule book. Yeah, yeah but the, not, I've seen like. Kiss bands call themselves like the official tribute band of Kiss, and Kiss is still around, at least for a little bit. Right? I'm surprised yeah. they have so, not been sued because like Kiss is not known for being like super awesome with like you know. I don't know. I Kiss is known for not being like, super awesome yeah. in general. In general, yeah. Yes. But you know, like for whatever, like are you know, like someone does like an official like Green Day like. Yeah, you know, I know there was. I, a, I've seen them market themselves as such, so I take it at their word. It's like a, okay, that's what. They're doing really yeah. big problem in like the mid '80s and early '90s, where uh, like the old Motown bands, like the Four Tops and the or the, 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 for the Four Seasons, and like those kinds of bands were like most of those dudes were dead at this point, and so they just got four other guys that could sing mm -hmm. and went out there and had them perform all of the. And it was like. And you know the the estates of the original men that wrote those songs and things they weren't getting a dime of it. It was the record company that owned the name of the band and owned the, the rights to the music, and they would just stack it up with you know a bunch of shills essentially like scabs, just dudes that could carry the notes and then right. still present it as you know the Four Seasons or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we see that a lot now with like some of the older bands that are out playing, and it'll have like 
maybe one original member and everyone else is like 20 to 30 I years like, younger. It, yeah. it sucks, but what? I feel if you have one original member, like it's kind of lame, but I, it's that, legit. I mean, I'm I don't not, know. <laughs> I'm not I'm coming from a band that only has one original member. Right. Yeah, Boy. that's true. Yeah. Uh, but but I but I will say there is there was something really wonderful when you saw Chris and Fate play, for example, because yeah. you had fucking Lance and Chris and Jay, and they have been there forever. Right. You know, right. um, in tournament when Eric right. and Brandon are on stage at the yeah. same time, that is like those motherfuckers have been doing shit together for over twenty years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not. And it shows. Yeah. Like, um, and, and, and even to a lesser year effect, but still really awesome to see, is Electric Bandits because... I fucking love Electric Trey Bandits. Trey and Brandon <laughs> have, have really... been there since day one. Yeah. And Paul has been there since 2011. Has not left since. Yeah. That's eight years. Oh, yeah. Like, he's been in Electric Vengeance longer than Alex. Mm-hmm. Jesus. I think that's his name, right? The other the... guy? The other bassist before... Oh, Mike. Mike. Yeah. yeah. Why did I? Wow, Billy. Wow, Billy. I am. I. You I, are slacking on your Electric slay. Vengeance trivia, For and that guy. is not acceptable. Sing song you know what's not acceptable? <laughs> when Alberto was in Oklahoma City, and I couldn't went to see him, right. and Brandon didn't fucking tell me, and Brandon went to go hang out with him without me. <laughs> Fuck you, Brandon. Right. I still remember that shit. He's not bitter at all. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I just wanted to say hi. hi. <laughs> <laughs> he wrote music together. I'm <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, just giving him shit. But um, yeah, this was our first show with uh, Carlos as a new guitar yeah. player. And he did great. He learned all that in two weeks except the visions. That's why he ran, That's why he ran out the pit. Yeah, yeah, dude. But like, I mean. <sighs> Carlos is a machine. And Jacob was there last night tearing mm-hmm. shit up. So it yeah. was a. Uh, God, I'm fucking sorry I missed this thing. You guys, uh, um, you know, it was, like I said, it was a great There's a couple more yeah. Vest Fest benefits. Good deal, cool. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, I, I knew Mike, but I, I didn't, I honestly just couldn't get out. <laughs> I think Mike was the best. Mike was probably, when, 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 when he was active, you know, at, up until his last day, he was the most, like, supportive person in the scene. Like, when I spoke at the eulogy, I spoke at his eulogy, and I essentially said, it's funny how people think that I'm the super mega supportive guy, which I am. But people have always said, you are the most, the most. And I'm like, you're fucking bullshitting me with that. Because Mike was there all the fucking time. Mm-hmm. If he, While we were at home at 9 p.m. on a Wednesday night, Eating fucking ice cream, high watching Game of Thrones. That motherfucker was at this fucking out of town house show with for three grindcore bands, and there's like seven people in the room besides the bands. Right, that's that is hardcore. Right? That, yeah. yeah, he did that shit every fucking day. Mm. Every fucking day. Scenes die without people like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you need yeah. to die. Well, like I mean, that. it's literally just the people. Like that's the whole yeah. thing, right? It's like, and so. In a community like ours, it's like even though it's a big one, it's still pretty small, and uh, so you know someone's presence is greatly missed. That's why uh, I always tell people because this was a, I, I especially start saying this out loud when the current club was announced on being closed. Yeah. And you know, and everyone was like, "Oh, this is so sad. This is gonna be a really hard day for the scene. Blah 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 blah. This place is such a monument." The scene's never going to be the same again. And I'm like, you're wrong as fuck. The scene is going to be the same because the same people that made Curtain Club great, all the cool memories you have of all your friends and your families and your girlfriends and your exes there, you made that. You made that by going to that yep. venue. You made that venue. The venue was made for you mm-hmm. to create memories in. It's not meant to be a monument. Look, I love... The history behind CBGBs. Mm -hmm. That place is monumental. It's monumental because of the shows thrown there, the people that attended those shows, and the people that worked them. That's why those places are known. You can knock down Curtain Club. It's okay because, you know what? Another venue's going to pop up, and all those people that made that place fucking fun is going to go make that place fucking fun. Mm -hmm. That's just how it is. Like, people are the scene. We are the scene. Look, Reno's and Wits and the Tomcats are important, but they are going to go down one day. And when they do, there are going to be other venues that pop up. And those venues are going to become the Mecca. Right. 
because of us. Right. People don't realize that. People are so embroiled with this idea of nostalgia, of mm -hmm. this idea of memories, and they need to understand that people are making those memories. Yeah. yeah. That make places for you. Yeah. Is this like yeah? It's just a building. Unless you're like a really cool water park yeah, like Schlitterbahn, and then you have really badass water slides. That's definitely worth the four-hour drive and the three-day booking <laughs> for. Fuck yeah, man! So, <laughs> I, but so, but a place like that was meant to make memories. So you know, at the end of the day, that's why that, that's always what I tell people when they're stuck on shit like that, and they're like, "You still don't understand?" I'm like, "No, I do understand right. because I've made memories. That's that I made made so many memories of that dude." It was crazy. Yeah. You know what I mean? He made the places he went to great. Mm -hmm. Even three links. You're right, though. It's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> I love how you ended that, though. Even yeah. three links. Right? <laughs> I've only been twice. It's a great venue. No, yeah. it isn't. Cleveland Lions going to do MOPs playing there in September. I and saw that. Who the fuck, guess who the fuck wasn't asked to play it? The only band that does an SOD cover. <laughs> the fuck? The fuck? I mean, actually, well, that's why. It's because you don't do an MOD cover. Oh, okay. But don't they play SOD material? Uh, I don't know. I've never seen MOD live. I've never Nor have I seen SOD, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. I'd love to, but I haven't. <coughs> that is one of those bands that I would like to see before either I die or they die, though. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I heard that there was like rumor of like a possible reunion tour. I don't know. That'd be rad as fuck. It would be. I would go fucking see it. Yeah, I would yeah. love to open that shit. That'd Dude. be so much fun. Oh, yeah, man. That, that first SOD, that's just literally a classic album. I mean, it's... Yeah, speaking of the should I? Hell yeah. yeah. It's ridiculous. It's the... It is the gold standard for Christmas. That was one of those albums that when I was like walking by in the record store and I saw the cover and I was just like, oh, I'm getting that. And yeah. I took it home and I was just like, this is this fucking is amazing. amazing. <laughs> 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 For sure. Hell oh, yeah, it's just insane, like, and that's just another example of just, like, it's the people that create the things that we love. Yeah. You know? So, speaking of creation, you've got your podcast going. What episode are you on now? This episode? Oh, shit. Um, let's find out what, let's find out what episode this episode would be, technically, because <laughs> even I don't know. I've lost track. Of so it's not just us. It's not just us. It's because it's because I've had two episodes cancel in a row, so I don't. Ex yeah, I so it's not just us. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so I exactly don't know where I am, but I can definitely find out. Um, is it can't be? It can't be this episode. There's no way. No episode seventy eight. That okay, okay. yeah. So you're episode seventy nine. Three. Yep. That's yeah. awesome. So how long has it been going? Two years? About. Just about. Uh, Sword Time Devil is one of the first guys I had on the podcast. I know. Yeah. Every episode five. Yeah. yeah. That was awesome. That was a good time. going to be an episode soon, too. Awesome. Awesome. Man, we'll come out. Yeah. Yeah, Thank yeah. you so much for having us on. We had yeah, a great dude. time, man. Yeah, dude, no, this has been a lot of fun. As I said, you know, uh, I, as I said, I love being the guy who gets interviewed, but at the same time, this has been equally just as fun. Oh yeah, man, I'm having a blast. Yeah, yeah. dude. Like, My ass is falling asleep. So, um, so guys, <laughs> um, where can people find your content, uh, and what is your scheduling like? So we've recently uh, gone back to uh, doing a once every two week release we, we started it, weekly, but it was it was brutal well we started <laughs> off doing bi-weekly and the the kind of worry that we had at the beginning uh which was well founded was uh like are we going to get enough people to show up on this fucking thing yeah and uh we were really like kind of taken aback that not only that but like people like kind of shortly after like started to like want to come on the show we didn't have to like twist arms or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, it's actually, and, it's been really nice. And, uh, um, you know, so we started off being bi-weekly because we wanted to make sure that whatever schedule that we sat, or that we set, sorry, that we kept to it. Because we didn't want to vary and be unreliable. Like, yeah, one of the first things we agreed on is like consistency of schedule. This thing needs to come out at a certain time, mm -hmm. the same time every week. And when that was key in it, that actually helped a lot you yeah. know what i mean it, it was the following and like people know like at least the the, the following that we have know that like you know first thing monday morning there's the video yeah and so it's uh so um, we did it for like maybe like six eight months 
and we were doing the bi-weekly and we had stored up like all of these episodes that we hadn't got to yet and we're like fuck it's like we we didn't want to be in the position of where we, where we uh, interviewed somebody and then like two months later the interview came out so uh, we started the beginning of the year uh, going to a weekly schedule and we were able to maintain it <laughs> the problem is is that as all of us do when you work full-time jobs and are in active bands Mm -hmm. uh, doing a weekly podcast because it's not the interviewing parts like super easy and super fun to lo look forward to it's like a high part of the week but there's hours of work that go into releasing each episode yeah. and that pretty much falls on Jason yeah and so and it was killing him it, it was, <laughs> well and, and then it is the problem is is that at that rapid of pace then again if you're not you know working all the time and in busy bands you have time to troubleshoot because we had uh, an episode where we had technical problems and we weren't able to release it, but because we were on such a tight schedule, we couldn't like go back and fix it. We just had to go on to the next episode. So we cleared out everything that we have, we're current on our interviews, mm -hmm. and just for quality control, we've gone back to the, the once every two week release we and we're going like to try to stick to we that. Can put out a more concise product that way essentially is like we have a lot more elbow room to make sure that it's right yeah i feel like i honestly have been debating about doing the once every two weeks as well mm -hmm. because of just avoiding the issue of a they've done an episode canceled twice in a row now yeah you know I mean? so and that's a bummer yeah, yeah, it is. yeah you know so I, you know, and I'm not getting a lot of outreach. I mean, the, the album reviews keep me afloat a little bit. And those are great. They are great. Yeah. By the way, thank you for, for our album review, man. That was a very honest and very flattering album review. Yeah, I appreciate dude. it. Thank you. Yeah, I'm like, I have to fucking find I Because like, I really like the album, and I want it to kind of sit down and dump it. Okay, but like, I, 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 but you know, I, I kind of listen to it, and then the criticism I did give on it was something I did find out like the day I was going to do it, because mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. Um, and I yeah, I like the the man like the mammoth hunt song oh, yeah. too. But man, some but like when you're listening to the album all day and you yeah. and you hear it over and over again, yeah. it was like damn. It's like hammering in my head now. Yeah. This fucking Goliath fucking <laughs> elephant and just wants to fucking fucking stick its horn through your kid's fucking throat. Pretty much. You that know? was where I was going for. Uh, it's actually a retelling of Moby Dick, but instead of sailors and a whale, it's cavemen and a man. That's fucking cool! <laughs> okay, hell That was one of those, like, I wrote that song and I was like, good job, man. Yeah. <laughs> that was yeah. a fun metaphor to explore. But no, uh, but you kind of did bring back to the Black Sabbath vibe mm -hmm. with um the realm queen I think oh the realm of the space queen yeah. yeah that yeah that yeah because like the intro definitely gave me a vibe of the uh 13 by yes style. no yeah and yeah. uh i actually really like that album. i did too, too right? actually yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, you can pretty much play me anything that Tony Naomi writes, and I'm going to listen to it. Oh, exactly. Yeah. So, right <laughs> so I even yeah. like fucking, what was that? But, uh, Heaven and Hell, the actual band that they had. That was good shit. It was fucking great. That was good shit. Bible Black is a sick ass song. Dude, that last album they put out with Dio as Heaven yeah. and Hell. That so was fucking sick. good. Yes. Uh, but I mean, uh, the only criticism that you really had is totally true. It was like, these guys find a riff and they hammer that riff into your brain. And be, that's because we do like that more Nawabum thing and that was mm -hmm. kind of a sign of the time. And also I write good riffs and I want you to remember that shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I, I mean, that's, but that, and that's honestly the most common criticism I've noticed I've given people. Uh, for example, Silverport was a band that I also did a recent um, review on. And I'm not really even into the metalcore anyway mm -hmm. that much. Well, but, that's know. like, for so many metalcore bands, I meet very few people that are like, I'm into metalcore. <laughs> yeah, weird. but it's so widespread, so someone is. It yeah, is. somebody's into metalcore. But, right? um, but, you know, I but the major criticism I have of their debut EP release was this is just... Like, all these songs are pretty good, but, like, they all have the same build, the mm -hmm. same direction, the same digression, in the same hard to soft part. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, their builds are very similar. They're st it's just a similar structure that's been copied and pasted and slightly altered. Mm -hmm. You know, it's yeah. still a nice listening album to listen to if you're into that thing. But, I, but you know, it's just there's 
just, just that repetitiveness. And there has been something, too. Uh, a big complaint I had about the protest album, though I did enjoy it. I did mm -hmm. enjoy Protest's latest release from last year. Um, it was just that, um, you know, it's most of the, half, at least half of that album was just the basic bare knuckle of what they do. Right. I, I think I, you, you talked about this on our podcast. You were like, this did not do them justice. You know, is this the same band? I can't remember. Uh, I do remember I did talk about Life of Scars. Okay. And I, I did say how I was not a fan of the album at all, and that I just knew that I felt like Wayne could do better. And, um... I don't think that perception has gone over too well. I mean, <laughs> well, let me, let amongst me. Uh, amongst the community and amongst like people who watch me, it has. Yeah. But uh, there, de I've definitely gotten some some looks. And well, some let, let me just say, I'm a fan of that. I think that uh, it's in it, it, as long as you keep your opinion in a respectful manner, which you do. Yeah, you it don't is, just show up and be like, this sucks, I yeah. hate these guys, no, this is fucking great. I think it's so useful to give your honest opinion on something, because if everybody is great, if everything is great, it's not. You know what I mean? It, it's like, it's and, so, you don't want to fall into that trap of being fake just to be nice. And on the flip side of that, if everybody sucks, you just come off looking like an Yeah, amazing, you're just a douche. Yeah. You know, it is, you, you got there are, it. there are critics that make their entire fucking livings off writing shit of, like of that. Of course, yeah. but, you know, I I think it's great is, is, you know, I think criticism is one of those things that, you know, it's as good or bad as you make it. Is You can take a criticism and not listen to it at all. Awesome. You can take a criticism and internalize it and try to grow from it. Or you can just come to the conclusion that the person that's giving the criticism doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about. Yeah. But either way, but it also it helps is, it, it, the, the only way that it is useful is if it's honest. coming from an honest place yeah. and you're not trying to just bag on somebody. And I think that you do that. And that's why I like hearing that because at least I know that if you give a review and you honestly like something, I don't have to second guess and be like, does Billy really like it? No, I know you do. It, you should it, go because yeah. he will say if there's something he doesn't like. You should go listen to the Bullet Machine album. It's good. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed it. I'm not even like, I wasn't even really super into pop punk <laughs> until recently. And uh, damn, it's good. Yeah. Like, it's really quirky, it's uppity, it has a lot of high energy. Um, what else did I review this year that I really, really enjoyed? Um, Blast and Scout Vomit. Great yeah. fucking mm -hmm. album. It's ridiculously funny. <coughs> crazy, crazy band. shit. <laughs> um, Colby is fucking hilarious. Right. I mean, you know, it's a good album. It reflects them really well. And uh, Cordell's vocals are definitely going to be missed. Mm -hmm. um, that dude was really good. Next, ep I mean, fuck it, I'll just say it. Next episode's going to be on My Stasis. You know, they yes. and they had an album released the day after Bull Machine on Tomcats, mm -hmm. that Black and Thrash Band. And holy fuck, dude, they're ridiculously good. You know, and that album is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Frozen Soul just came out with yeah. a, uh, like, fucking M Michael Monday. Mm -hmm. Dude. So it's so nastily brutal. Like it's that old school death metal slash like hardcore vibe from like the early nineties. It's nice. so gross. I like that kind of Michael Monday just writes really good riffs and crunches. That I I mean all respect in the world that dude. That dude was a former Pitbull member too, so yeah. fucking much respect to him. Um, guys, this has been a lot of fucking fun. Yeah, man, thank you for having us. Time yeah, flew man, by. Yeah, That's totally, just like yeah. um, when we had you on the podcast. Yeah, man, for real. Uh, Get him we'll, back out. We'll, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll definitely have you back. I mean, it, that's... That's one of the things that, that is D &D enjoyable so D &D yeah, game. about <laughs> what it. we try to do is, is that, you know, just kind of like going off on a tangent and talking and discovering more about whoever's on the show. So every Monday on a bi-weekly basis, yes. there will be an episode. So coming out tomorrow, Monday, tomorrow morning, is going to be the combat episode. Mm. Which I recommend. Those guys were fun, dude. Yeah. Mm. Yes. And, and, uh, and then in the can, then we have a... Uh, Two weeks after that is going to be Apophis. Oh shit! Yeah. Cool. Hey, good job, Reed. There you go. <laughs> All right. This has been DFW Metal Mayhem, the, the most, most brutal, brutal podcast, podcast in, in the Metroplex. Metroplex.